So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for me to welcome you to a new career mode series here on FIFA 19, but it's FIFA 19 like you've never seen it before. Apart from in literally the last video I uploaded, I've just realised. This is the FIFA 2019-2020 mod. This season starts in July of 2019. All the transfers, all the teams, all the kits have been updated to the new season. It's like we're playing FIFA 20, but with the FIFA 19 menu. Because let's be honest, not much will probably change uh, for career mode. So to be honest, I could call this a FIFA 20 career mode right now. We've got the likes of Diego Godin going to Inter. We've got the likes of Eden Hazard getting unveiled at Real Madrid after his move to Chelsea. We are the Arsenal manager though. Just realised I didn't actually say that. Now, we've chosen Arsenal. It was suggested quite a lot in a post that I put up on my YouTube community tab. You guys were able to leave your comments down below underneath that and suggest teams that I should use. I will be honest with you, Newcastle and Sheffield United were suggested far more. But the reason I didn't go for Newcastle was because my good friend Charney literally just started a career mode with them. Would have been a little bit peak from myself to start with the same team. The reason I didn't choose Sheffield United is because I'd actually like to start FIFA 20 with them. It says Mr. Manager in the top left. Can we please ignore that? I forgot to change the name. Pretend it, it says Niran Yusufu. Alright. Anyway, this Arsenal team is going to present a challenge in its own right because I will be honest with you, it's a complete and utter mess. In goal, we've got some stability in fairness. To be honest, the back four isn't horrendous ratings wise. We've got Hector Bayer in, uh, Socrates here, Captain Koscielny, although it seems like his Arsenal future might be coming towards a swift end in real life and Sead Kolasinac. Now, you'll notice Kolasinac there is 76 rated. That's because with this mod on one of the many things that's gone into the packaging of this, the ratings have changed. Kolasinac had a poor season. He's gone down dramatically. Ozil had a poor season. He's gone down dramatically. So I think we're going to have to bring in a new left back for sure. On the left-hand side of midfield, we've got Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. In holding mid, we've got Xhaka and Torreira. Mkhitaryan on the right. Ozil as a number 10. And then up top, leading the line is Lacazette. A very young bench, I will be honest with you. So before I take you through my shortlist, you'll see the transfer listed section has Mesa Ozil in it, which is potentially a little bit of a controversial one. Shkodra Mustafi, Mohamed Elneny, and Takuma Asano as well, who I just don't see us using whatsoever. Ozil is the big one. His wages are quite high. It says he's only worth £25 million. Pounds. I'm pretty sure that's because of his age, but hopefully we can get substantially more than that, to be honest, because we're going to need to. If we're going to replace him as an attacking mid and bring in someone who's a bit younger, we're probably going to have to spend a whole lot more than £25 million. Anyway, if you're excited for this series to fully get underway, slap a like on this video and subscribe if you are new to the channel. I, for one, am buzzing for this. I, I, you know what? I love a good career mode series. As always, for whatever players you want me to buy, whatever positions you think I need to strengthen, drop it down in the comment section below. I love to interact with you guys and try and bring in the players that you want me to to buy and sign. Unfortunately, with the nature of this series, I won't be able to do it for everything. That's because I'm actually going away on a holiday very soon, so I'm having to pre-record episodes two, three, no, sorry, three and four. Now, I will be honest with you, there's been one thing that's been on my mind before I even hit record. It is, it's a little bit controversial. We've got Alex Iwobi here, who, to be honest, I plan to be a backup winger, but someone who will still get a lot of game time. He's JJ Okocha's nephew. He's come through the Arsenal Youth Academy from day one. But I noticed something very extraordinary that the mod has done to him, and that has put his value at £45.5 million. Pounds. Now, I love Alex Iwobi as an outsider as much as the next guy, but £45.5 million pounds is a substantial amount for an 81 rated player. I feel like we could sell him and then bring in a better player for cheaper. Let me know in the form of a vote in the top right of the screen what I should do with Alex Iwobi. Should we sell him? Bearing in mind he's a he's more than an Arsenal original, he's an Arsenal youth product, but also in the knowledge we could really use the funds from him to really improve this side in other areas. We've got a bid already for Mohamed El Nenny from Everton of 6.8 million pounds. I think this is just above what he's worth. Yeah, he's worth 6 million pounds already. Uh, we're going to start the offer at 9 and then don't sell the player for any less than 7.5. Similarly, it hasn't taken long to get a bid for Squadron Mustafi. 7.2 million pounds from Marseille. 
I'm going to start it at 9.5 and then don't sell them for any less than 7.8. If you're wondering about the length of the transfer window, it does end when it usually does on FIFA. It doesn't end on, I think it's usually the 8th of August now. Now, the first player we're going to go in for is going to be an easy one when it comes to signings that we are going to make. William Saliba has had an unreal season for Son Etienne in real life, and it's led to interest from both North London sides in Arsenal and Tottenham. It seems like Arsenal have won the race as I'm commentating this, so I think we are safe to sign this guy. His current value is £3.9 million. I'm not going to bother with trade deals just yet. I'm going to go ahead and literally just straight up offer what his valuation is and then see what they say about that. 3.9 million pounds, I mean, give or take, they want like 100k more. So we're just going to go ahead and accept that one. So as a deal agreed for William Saliba with Son Etienne. And now we go ahead and negotiate with the French youngster. He's going to walk into the manager's room and we're about to slap a contract down on the desk. William, mate, you've had a brilliant season for Son Etienne. Your club, for some reason, won like 20 mil less than you're worth in real life. You want 16 and a half K in wages and a bit of an appearance bonus. Yeah, we can get on board with that. I don't know why the wage budget has suddenly gone down to 4K. Uh, we'll go ahead and accept that because it's pretty low, to be honest with you. So with that, William Saliba becomes our first signing of this transfer window. It's not exactly a surprising one given he's so close to a move in real life, but the Son Etienne youngster is now an Arsenal player. And here he is in his brand spanking new Arsenal kit our new number four William Saliba carries his kit number from Son Etienne over to North London as well six foot four very tall decent enough defensive stats we're gonna train this guy a lot because he's so young and he's got such a high potential and straight from the get-go we'll get William Saliba in training along with some of the other young promising players in the side the likes of Eddie and Keita Reese Nelson fresh from his loan at Hoffenheim and also Emil Smith Rowe who's also just returned from a loan in Germany so th these guys are gonna be the ones getting trained we've got some big deals going on already Already in the transfer market, Anthony Martial has gone to the new look Juventus or Piemonto Calcio as they're actually going to be. But biggest of all, Chris Wood has left Burnley for Real Betis. Borussia Dortmund, interestingly enough, have come in for a £26.6 .6 million bid to take him back to his homeland. We're going to go ahead. I think I might negotiate this in the actual boardroom this time. They're going to give us 33 mil. Right, 33 million pounds for Mesut Ozil. I will be honest, he's not amazing. But, I mean, it's a lot of wages coming off the wage bill as well, I guess. We'll have to wait and see whether he agrees a fee with Dortmund or agrees personal terms. We couldn't agree a fee with uh, Monaco for Mustafi, but hopefully he's on his way to Marseille. And indeed he is. Squadron Mustafi has gone to Marseille for £8.2 million. We get six and a half mil of that. And El Elneny has also gone to Everton, which means we get further £6 million in the transfer kitty. So, and now, confirmation that a third player has been sold in this transfer window already. I mean, to be fair, we've already got to the end of July. That's really quick, I can't lie. Now, we've got quite an obscure signing potentially coming up, or quite an interesting one. I can't lie, I've been panic shortlisting because we've arrived pretty much at the start of the season, the first game of it, and we're very limited in the centre mid department. We are going to bring in a replacement for Ozil. It's just that obviously for this first game, until I can give you guys the chance maybe to vote for someone, I don't have a replacement for him, or even really is someone I would just feel confident in. Now, I want to bring in a backup centre mid anyway, and I found Rodrigo Bentanka, who we can actually try and bring in on loan. I have no idea whether it'll work for sure. Now, they want us to do a 60-40 split. I will try and go for 50-50, because that's what I always do when it comes to wages. And Juventus are happy to do a half and half. So, hopefully, Rodrigo Bentanka will say yes, not only generally speaking, but also in time for the first game of the season. You can see there were a couple of other players we were looking at. Martin Erdegaard was also an option. And as we continue to improve our depth before the start of this season, before going into buying the serious players in this transfer window, we're looking at a new backup striker because now Bamayang and Lacazette both playing at the same time. Our next best striker is Eddie Nkita. He's had a great preseason in real life. I'm not sure if I can back him just yet as our only 
backup striker. Jean-Philippe Mateta did really well in real life for Mainz in the Bundesliga. He's a 79 overall, 22 year old with a decent potential. I think he can grow to about 83 or 84. So with his current value only being 11 and a half million pounds, that seems like quite the snip to me. So we're going to go ahead and as we usually do, just put that on the table. Instead, they will want 17.2 and a sell-on clause of 5%. We'll meet in the middle and we'll go for 14 million pounds. And in the end, we've agreed on a fee of 14.8 mil for the Mines front man. So again, he's going to be a backup striker. There you can see 91 sprint speed, 90 strength, um, and obviously 82 finishing and 83 heading accuracy. I realize I am wasting a little bit of money in terms of bonuses, but they're so low for players that aren't above the rating of like 85 that I think we can just about get away with it. Uh, now we've got to put the wages down. I always hate doing this. Right, current wage. We've got a bit to spend in wages. So I'm going to go ahead and give him like 35k, 200k signing bonus. Or should we give him a little bit more in wages just to be sure? Because I don't want to go into that first game of the season without this guy in the side. I can't lie. Oh, for God's sake, man. Well, we've been rejected. At least one positive is that Rodrigo Bentanka has come in on loan for a season. In terms of players going out as well, Nacho Monreal has gone to West Ham for 6.3 million pounds. We get the thick end of 5 mil for that one. I think really this is what we're going to run for this first game of the season. A 4-3-3 attacking with Mkhitaryan in the number 10 role for now. It will be on the right. Lacazette through the middle. Aubameyang on the left. Xhaka and Torreira as holding mids and there's your back four as well. Obviously you guys know there's a lot of work that still needs to go into this side. I want to bring in another winger especially if we sell Iwobi. I want to bring in another number 10 because I don't think Mkhitaryan there on his own is good enough potentially a left back as well. Now though it is time for that first game of the season. Neither of the two players we've brought in so far in this window are going to be involved. The starting 11 but Bentanka is on the bench. I guided you through the starting 11 a moment ago. I don't want to underestimate Aston Villa, but it is probably quite lucky that we're facing a newly promoted side with the side that we're putting out today. It's by no means the strongest or the, the side that I hope to end the transfer window with. So at this point, I'm happy to be playing a side that's fresh out of the, the league below. The first game of our adventure, the first game of the new Premier League season against Aston Villa, the first foul of the Premier League season already given away. It's just going to be odd. I've never really done a career mode like this before as Mkhitaryan swings it into the area. It's cleared away, though, by an Aston Villa defender. It looks like we've already picked up an injury there. Obviously, I'm not afraid to sell players who are playing badly as well. This is another thing. Torreira, Lacazette, first time. I don't know how that save has occurred, but it has. How has he managed to punch it in that direction? Fair enough. Now, we've got a chance here as Mkhitaryan is in the center, unmarked. And we've grabbed our first goal of the series. Alex Iwobi on the right-hand side in far too much space. Manages to put the ball into the area and Henrik Mkhitaryan is not going to pass up that opportunity. Defending questions need to be asked, I feel, about that Villa defence, but Mkhitaryan is not going to care. Chaka gives the ball away in the middle of the park. He still hasn't shaken off that injury, which I'm not going to lie. I am concerned about. How have we already got an injury in this series? It's been 20 minutes. I'm not going to lie. I'm not enjoying Aubameyang as a winger. It's just not making sense as Granite Chaka goes for a long range effort, but it's really poor. It's just not working. I just don't enjoy it. Why would you play a striker as competent as Aubameyang on the wing? It doesn't make sense. Now, Villa almost had a chance to get forward, but Lucas Torreira with his Carlos Tevez bulldog-like approach intercepts. The danger is gone. A danger is firmly on here for Villa. Mkhitaryan trying to chip it over the goalkeeper. Great work from the Villa shot stopper to come out and close the angle quickly. Here's Alex Iwobi. Lacazette's making the run in behind. This is Alexander Lacazette forces the save, comes to Aubameyang back into the middle, it's a massive scramble, Mkhitaryan tries to flick it over his head, messes it up completely, there you go, your first 45 minutes of the series are done, with 1-0 up against Aston Villa here in the first game of the Premier League season, the substitution's got to be made Granit Xhaka is not shaking off this injury, so Juventus new boy and loney Rodrigo Bentanka is coming on, Bentanka now out into Aubameyang, 
who goes past the Villa defender far too easily. It's Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang off the crossbar and down Villa yet again get away with one. I've got no idea what the right back was doing there, but just decided not to go to Aubameyang at all. This is Henrik Mkhitaryan, lovely skill from him. Now through into Alex Iwobi and it's saved again. The Nigerian was offside though. Over into Alexander Lacazette from range and again, this Aston Villa keeper's having the game of his life so far. Now Villa are coming forward very dangerously here with Kodjia. There's men in the middle. One of them is Wesley. It's come to Jota on the volley. That was uh, some serious technique, but thankfully it's an easy save for Bern Leno. We can go now straight up the other end. Now, Bamayang plays a great ball through, but Lacazette is shoved off the ball and he'll win a free kick for his trouble. It's pretty far out. I'll be brutally honest with you. I don't think a shot's going to happen straight away. Instead, it's pushed to Alexander Lacazette. Powerful effort, but the keeper pushes it away once again. We've got another injury again, and it's a midfielder again. It's Lucas Torreira. It looks Looks like it's gonna be an okay 1-0. I mean, nah, it's it's three points. I'm happy with that, but a lack of clinicality in front of goal is worrying, but also I think the um, the actual realism mod we're running has nerfed all kinds of shooting because there were certain shots I was having during the course of that game and they were very poor in comparison to what you would see usually. Maybe the sliders need to be worked on just a little bit for both the AI and for my own shooting. Two injuries as well picked up might be a little bit excessive, but none of the in the end was Alex Iwobi, the man whose fate depends on a pole in the top right of the screen. He got 9.1 rating. Maybe we'll be justified the prize tag that we get for him in the end. Aubameyang with an 8.9. Mkhitaryan with an 8.5 as well. So we picked up two injuries you may remember from that game. Thankfully for us, the one for Granit Xhaka wasn't that bad. Only five days. He should be back for the second game of the season. However, Lucas Torreira is out for three weeks with a sprained knee. This just shows how much the squad depth or lack of at the moment is going to be important. So we need to start bringing in some players. We're going to have to do that next episode. And that, I suppose, brings me to the next point of the video. And this is it. It's down to you guys to decide the next player that we bring in. Now, we sold Mesut Ozil. We need a replacement for him. I hear that. But I also feel like we need another winger as well. Um, um, especially if we're going to sell Iwobi. Obviously, that is up for discussion. But assuming we do, we're definitely going to need another winger. First of all, and the most expensive out of a lot, is going to be Nicolas Pepe, the Lille winger. This guy has been a target of bids or interest from any big team in Europe. He would be very expensive. We currently have £150 million even without selling Iwobi. So if we could bid between 70 mil and 100 mil, we could afford him, but it would maybe leave us a little bit short on them bringing in a number 10. So that's the caveat to that one. On top of that, we've got Wilfred Zaha, who's maybe a bit more of a realistic option in terms of rumours in real life. The Crystal Palace forward has been linked with a move to Arsenal all summer. I can confirm he is 82 overall. I don't know why the game seems to have forgotten that. I did scout him, but for some reason, yeah, it's gone back to being a question mark. But it's not exclusively an African situation. We could bring in a European as well. Suso of AC Milan is the third option. He used to play as an attacking mid. Honestly, I'd be happy deploying him there as well, even though that's not one of the positions listed on his preferred ones. He's got a release clause as well at 57.7 million pounds. So we know exactly what we would be paying for him. A little bit more than Zaha, but considerably less than Nicolas Pepe and can grow still to 85 in career mode. So those are your three options. Two players that have been linked during the course of the summer with Arsenal in real life in varying amounts. And then a final wildcard option from Italy. So feel free to vote in the top right of the screen for which winger we should bring in. And if you haven't already, vote on whether we should be selling Alex Iwobi for that mammoth prize tag that he seems to have. You'll have to wait till next episode though to see what exactly we do in terms of signings and sales as well because we are done for today's video. I apologize if it's been a little bit of a slow burner, but a first episode of a career mode pretty much always is, to be honest with you, just getting used to the side, getting used to playing with the team and bringing in a couple of players until I can give you guys the opportunity to vote for someone really important. But we brought in William Saliba, brought in Ben Tanker on loan. I think both those signings are pretty savvy ones. Hopefully we'll be able to bring in a backup striker as well next episode and then obviously really start ramping things up with some big, big money signings. As you can see, the likes of Martial and Nicolas Sula have already been done. If you enjoyed the first episode, though, of this new FIFA 19 modded Arsenal career mode, slap a like on it and subscribe if you are new to the channel. It's the big red button under the video and it massively helps me out. You can also follow me on social media. It's at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. 
and goodbye. <laughs>